Okay, so the previous video we set up viewports, we've set up movement, so next let's go over object collision. Um, so making it so there's actually stuff that blocks you in the room. And I will go over both that and how to do 2D and like 2D top down and 2D platformer. I'll go over both versions. So I'm just going to be using this code for the movement for now just because um, this code is what I use. I mean, <laughs> there's not other, there's not much else that I could say about that. Um, did I, let's see. Let's see. Um... Okay, so this is just the code for using the up, down, and the AWSND. I'll just make sure. Okay, so what you want to do is before it actually lets the player move this distance, you want to make sure whether they can move the distance, whether there's something in the way. So we're going to use a special function that will be kind of the highlighted function of today called place underscore meeting, which you can find what I'm going to show you guys in here in many other tutorials. Um, but, uh, well, you're here for now, so... We, this is what most people use, and it's pretty easy, and there's a few optimizations that can be made, and uh, I've seen this many different times, but this is what you do. So first, you want to check if the place where they are going to end up, so x, comma, y, so you're checking if this object at the x and y coordinates, and since we're moving horizontally, so we'll add HSPD, so it's going to check if the object where it wants to move has a meeting point with an object and we'll call it obj wall so if the wall is within this many pixels of the object which this will be four since our walk speed is four so if the wall is within four pixels of your object then it will engage a different thing to move you closer to the wall um, that way you don't move past the wall because you could be within let me just say, here's your character. Uh, well, actually, I can just show you in the room. Let's see. Let's zoom in. Okay. And what we're going to do real quick is create a new object called obj underscore wall. It doesn't need any special logic. We're going to create a new character and create a new sprite, sorry, and call it spr underscore wall. And make it 16 by 16. And then we're going to just fill it up with red. There we go. And then give the sprite to the object. Okay. So here's our wall. So if the wall is this far away from the player, that's more than four pixels. So when they're trying each time they when they press the move key, it's just gonna move them because that's fine. I mean it's far enough away, there won't be an error if they move this far, nothing happens. But if they're this close and they press the move key and they just move the four pixels, they're gonna be like inside the wall, which is not what you want. So what you want to do instead is when they're when you want to check will they end up inside the wall if they move here? If they will end up inside the wall, if that's a problem, if they're too close, then it's going to just move them one pixel, check if they're there. If they if they still haven't hit the wall yet, another pixel. If they still haven't hit the wall yet, it'll move another pixel. If they still haven't hit the wall yet, they'll move another pixel. So it'll just move them one pixel at a time, just until they're until where the next until one pixel over is the wall. So it's going to move them up so that their collision box is with the wall's collision box, right next to each other. Okay. So that's the logic behind what we're doing. So if it, if within four spaces is the wall, as I said, we want them to move one pixel at a time until they hit there. So we're going to use while, which I t said before, is a um, is going to loop. So what we're going to do is we're going to check a condition, and then we're going to go into here and just do this over and over until the condition is false. So the condition will be, again, place underscore meeting, x plus sign hspd comma y comma obj underscore wall and then we need to put a not in front of it okay so let me explain what this is so now so it's checking if it's within the space of within four pixels of the uh of the player if the wall is within four pixels of the player where they're trying to move whether hspd is positive or negative if it's within four pixels then of the wall then it's going to check well is the wall not within and this sign of hspd is going to be so if you have negative 100 and then you do the sign of negative 100 that is going to equal negative one 
the sine of 100 is equal to 1 and the sine of 0 is equal to 0. So it basically just gives you the whether it's positive or negative in one unit. So that's actually really useful because we just want to check if one pixel away the wall is one pixel away from the object. So whether they're moving to the left or the right, it'll either be x plus one, one pixel or x minus one pixel. So it's looking one pixel to the left or one pixel to the right of our player. And if it if there is not a wall there, if they have not hit the wall yet, then you just do x plus, e, plus equals x plus one. I'll, I'll write it in a simple way so you guys can see. So we're just gonna increase x by one as long as they have not hit the wall yet. Okay, so if there is not a wall one pixel away, then it will move them by one pixel. Okay, and then after it goes through this loop, what you want to do is set HSPD equal to zero because now they've moved all the way up to the wall and you don't want them to move any closer to the wall. And that is it. So let's go ahead and go in the room and we already have the player here and we're just gonna set him up here and we're gonna put one more wall to his left. And sure enough, I go, oh, I might have to fix that. But sure enough, you go right up against the wall like that, okay? Oh, sorry, guys. So <laughs> I accidentally did plus one. What I meant is plus sine HSPD again, because if it's negative, then you're going to want to move in the negative direction. So um, really quickly, instead of adding one, you have to do X plus the sine of HSPD. So if HSPD is negative 100, then it would just add negative, it'll move you one pixel in the negative direction. And if sine is 100, it'll move you one pixel in the uh, positive direction. So as you can see now, I move right up against it, just right, just like that, okay? Now it doesn't work for up and down, so keep that in mind, I haven't, <laughs> I haven't done that yet. But if you haven't guessed already, for up and down, we are going to put it just like that. Same thing as before, except this time we're checking for vertical speed. So if the meeting place above them is uh, above them by four pixels is a wall or below them by four pixels, or if the meeting place above or below them by one pixel. SPD, there we go. And then increase Y by one, by one or negative one by one unit and then set the vertical speed to zero. So just change all the X's to Y's because now we're working with Y and change the adding parts to the Y. Okay, so here we go and boom. Nice and up against the wall, all perfect and nice and it feels good. This is good, it's what people call pixel perfect collision. It just sounds too fancy, but the point is it, it's, um, it, I just call it the thing that moves you closer to the block so that you don't go through it. But yeah, anyways, so that's how to do collision with an object in flat down. Now I'll show you platformer. Platformer is pretty easy. Um, now object, if you haven't thought already, is not very convenient because if you're using, if you know anything about the system, the, if you know anything about the way that the system works and how it uses tiles, wouldn't it be a lot easier if I just use tiles because I can paint this whole level using tiles? What you're going to have to do since you're using this object collision is paint the whole level using tiles and then you're going to have to use these objects where you want, don't want them to go, like for walls, which might take a while and take up more space in your world, which there is a way to detect pixel collision, but it's a lot better if you know this object collision how to do it, how it works before you go to the pixel one because they have a lot of similarities, but there's a little bit, it's quite more complicated, especially if you want diagonal shapes and shapes that aren't a single tile. Anyways, so that's how you do this type of collision. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna put it down here. I'm gonna show you guys platformer because maybe some of you want to work on a platformer, but wait. <laughs> oh, sorry, I had the object wall selected, so I thought we were in the wall. Okay, so <laughs> what I'm going to do is, and if you didn't know already, to comment, to comment something out, you do double slash, but if you want to comment a large chunk, you do slash star, and then you end it with star slash. Just like that. So now we have a second set of code. The green code is not being used. The second set of code, we are going to get rid of the vertical speed, because in a platformer, the player is not able to uh, do that. 
So that's how it's going to be with this. And that's it. So they, it'll still work. Now, if the, like the collisions still work perfectly fine, all you have to do for the vertical speed is add some gravity to it. So vertical speed equals, um, let's see, uh, 10. Okay, so we'll just set it to 10. And then if we go into the room, and let's just uh, let's make a room using these objects with two, two what's it called? It's two little stair platforms. So you'll be able to see uh, just how this works. Okay, and then let's put the doggy way up there. So he's not against it, but you will see that if we put if we constantly set vertical speed equal to ten, that means it's constantly trying to make you fall very quickly, just like that. So now that you know. So if we're constantly setting it to 10, that means you're constantly going down. Now, what we can do to simulate some gravity. Um, now, what I like to do is let's just set a score for gravity. Well, sorry, there already is one. Uh, but let's just say GRV. We'll make it a, um, what's it called? We'll make it a variable. GRV, GRV equals 0 0.5. We'll just call it 0 0.5. So then what you do is if you want some acceleration, Okay, we can do GRV plus and then max, oh no, no, min, and then the first number is going to be VSPD, and the second number is going to be one. So now this is another function that you, that you have to figure out, so that you have to memorize. So this episode we have place meeting, which checks if at that point it finds it basically goes to that point and it says is there this object at that point then we got sign sign is going to return plus or minus one depending on what the value is so if the value is a positive number it gives you one if it's negative it gives you negative one or if it's zero it gives you zero min and max basically take the first number and the second number and takes the larger or the smaller so min is going to take the smaller max is going to take the larger so if we're doing this what we're doing is we're taking the vertical speed, which normally is zero, uh, we're setting it equal to gravity, which is 0 0.5, okay? Then we are adding whatever the smaller number between the vertical speed and, and one is. So at first, vertical speed is zero, so the smaller number between zero and one is zero, so it picks zero. So vertical speed is equal to gravity plus zero. So 0 0.5 plus zero is 0 0.5. Then we have 0 0.5, so it goes 0 0.5, is gravity so at the next step the next frame it goes 0 0.5 or 0 0.5 or 0 or 1 so it's going to pick 0 0.5 so it's going to add 0 0.5 to it and it will be 1 so with that logic we can do um, we can make it less because that's just going to make it increase really fast so we can you know divide this number by 10 so now it's going between a very small number and getting as soon as the uh, the the highest value that we're going to have here is going to be gravity plus uh, pretty much one. So we're going to have 1.5 for our highest value. Now, let's see. Let's make gravity equal to uh, three. OK, so let's try this out. It's going to pick it's going to increase as we as we go. So let's see. OK. Now, one more thing that we're going to want to do also is add a jump. So let's see. Jump equals keyboard underscore check VK underscore space. Okay. VK space, as you might have guessed from previous episodes, that's just checking for the space bar. If it's pressed, then jump will equal one. And then VSPD equals jump jump times negative 20 because uh, to go upwards you need a negative number and jump will be one so that's what we're going to set for that and then uh, the last thing we need to do is we're going to use this thing from before and this one right here to check if they're in the air so if they're in the air if if right below them right so this time we're going to look right below them so if one pixel in the y direction below them there is not a wall if there isn't a wall one pixel below them then it is going to run this code it's going to make the gravity 
the vertical speed go crazy fast. It's going to increase the vertical speed over time. Otherwise, it's not the vertical speed is just going to be zero. And then this is going to make you jump. So let's go into the play. And all I did was just add, there's just two lines of code here, uh, or three. And if we hit space, you go up really fast and then you go down. So that is going to just, as you can see, just boom. It, it, it's kind of jerky. doesn't make sense because what I'm doing is I'm just making the, um, the vertical speed very abrupt. And what you want to do is make it subtle, just like the gravity. Um, but at the same time, it's not... Um, it's not very subtle because of um, because I didn't do anything to it. I'm just making vertical speed equal to jump. So I think that's where I'll end it for this episode because it's been pretty long. But as you can see, it, it does get faster by a slight amount as you go down. I can make it more if I just go like this. Divided by five, pick them in between those two. Um, but I think that's where I'm going to end it for this episode, guys. You can try and make the vertical speed jump look better by using similar steps as the um, similar steps as the thing that I have right here with the minimum. But um, you can just do something similar to this. It's, it's really similar and you can use gravity in the code as well, but it'll make your guy jump up and look better because this just looks like a quick, quick, it's a little bit too much, you know? So you guys try and work that out. Um, also make it so that you try and make it so that you can only jump when you're on the wall. So like when you're on the ground. So also try and do that. But you're, you're also going to want to play around with these values to make it better. Um, another good thing to do is GRV. I think one that I'm using right now is gravity plus VSPD. No, plus... 0 